Hello everyone, this is Pallavi Pujar from Biotechnica. I hope you are uh, revising your complete syllabus thoroughly, right? So we are about to, yes, we are about to continue the remaining part of revision series. So already we have completed few chemistry and bio sessions, right? And today this is our inorganic chemistry topic, right? So no need of uh, afraiding regarding the inorganic chemistry because most of the theoretical parts are being mentioned. Uh, compared to the physical and organic part where physical chemistry is completely you are going to deal with the derivatives and the equations but organic chemistry where you are going to study mechanism part but when it comes to inorganic chemistry you will be a little bit uh, like how feeling boring right because inorganic chemistry will be completely about atoms elements and the group chemistry so today it is p block elements we are going to study so please join me faster so that we can start it soon as much as possible all right so p block elements where uh, you are going to study completely about group 13 to 18 that is starting from boron family to helium family so boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and helium right so there i am going to deal only about group 17 elements those are halogens so firstly let me start with the group 17 elements which are halogens okay so let's start it so first thing I want to mention uh, one more thing. The freebie of today's class is complete P block elements that is group 17 halogens. Notes will be available. So you have to be with me till last moment. Okay. So coming to the P block elements where specifically group 17 elements or halogens we can say. So halogens in the sense what the metals or the halogen compounds are specifically present in the C area so the sea salts whatever we can say those are halogen metals right so because of that reason the halo in the sense sea salt and gen means bond so specifically these are the sea salts that's why these are mainly called as the halogens okay so firstly you can see in case of the periodic table the group 13 to 18 completely so this is what 18 so completely we call them as a p block elements all right. So these P block elements, whatever you can see, all are important and specifically starting from 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, helium. So these all are what P block elements collectively we call. So these all metals, whatever you are going to study today are just simple halogens. So simple halogens where you are going to study with respect to the interhalogen compounds means the new topics what you are going to study apart from this preparation and the manufacture process or as the general periodic trends you are going to study the oxo acids interhalogen compounds. So coming to halogen part overall so starting from fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. So these are five five elements we collectively call them as a p block elements where specifically so in the p block specifically group 17 elements okay so these are group 17 elements in p block group so overall the fluorine chlorine bromine iodine specifically we will be knowing their characteristic properties that may be physical or chemical but the thing astatine is very rare chemical element which will be radioactive in nature so apart from that the fluorine chlorine bromine iodine whatever you are going to study with respect to their properties are more often studied rather than astatine so coming to overall overall with respect to their general periodic trends you have to study so just let us move on with respect to general periodic trends before before that you have to know the electronic configuration oxidation states and overall their atomic number in the group 17 so what exactly their atomic numbers so firstly you can see the fluorine is its atomic number 9 and chlorine 17 bromine 35 iodine 53 acetine 85 and according to that their atomic number electronic configurations are being mentioned clearly in the um, table so you can one thing observe that that 
this S2 and P5 is normal everywhere, right? So S2, P5, wherever you can see the element, so everywhere it is common. And that's why the general electronic configuration, what you can give it is NS2, NP5. So group 17 elements where general electronic configuration, you can write it as NS2, NP5. Only one electron is less to attain the noble gas configuration. That's why they are more electron, more reactive in nature compared to remaining all groups that is 13 14 to 16 okay so 18 whatever you know those are noble gas right so those all are noble gases where the configuration of noble gases will be ns2 np6 right so group 17 where only ns2 np5 you have and only one electron is uh, needed for those all group 17 elements that's why they are almost reactive in nature more reactive in nature compared to remaining all groups of uh, p blocks okay so here i have mentioned regarding their electronic configuration also and their oxidation state okay so their oxidation state as all you can see that is fluorine all alone exist only in minus one oxidation state and apart from that whatever the elements you can see all exist in minus one oxidation state apart from that they can show plus one plus three plus five plus seven oxidation state also so why is it so that you are going to study in periodic trends and the physical and chemical properties of group 17 elements. So these are what just in a table I have mentioned the oxidation state, electronic configuration and the atomic number of group 17 elements. So you have to know the electronic configuration of all the group 17 elements. So just try to mug up the electronic configuration or else just uh, write down the things like in easiest way. So now coming to the next part is group trends so group trends where you are going to study specifically ionization energy electron gain enthalpy or else remaining the appearance or else they how exactly their atomic size is increasing and the ionic size is increasing so overall you are going to study in the group trends part so group trends where you are going to consider firstly appearance okay so appearance where okay so appearance where you can see first thing how exactly all halogens have the color so first thing f2 f2 is yellow in color and its state is gaseous so it is gaseous in state and cl2 is greenish yellow and the box all over you can check with respect to their colors the box are being shown so f2 is completely bit different that is yellowish type and cl2 where it is uh, greenish yellow and br2 it is red brown or reddish brown we can say and i2 exist in gray color but when it is in vapor state so it will be exhibiting its purple color so it shows purple color and their states also you can see f2 and cl2 both are gaseous in nature but bromine is liquid in nature and i2 is solid in nature Okay, so these are what the states along with the color of the halogen. So you have to know one more thing that so you can get one question. So how exactly halogens exhibit colors? Why not any other elements? Why only the group 17 elements are mainly causing the color? So that just let us know when we study the physical and chemical properties. So right now you have to know their nature. Okay, I hope you have you know the nature of all the group 17 elements and apart from that already I have told electronic configuration. So electronic configuration where the atomic numbers along with their configuration. So overall how many electrons are present with respect to fluorine element, chlorine, bromine and iodine. Okay, so fluorine, bromine, iodine, whatever you can see the seven it represents its valence electron everywhere in all boxes. So electrons where as much as you are increasing the atomic number and the ele electrons are gone adding right that's why that's why there will be increase in its size also so this is what with respect to appearance with respect to appearance and the electronic configuration of group 17 elements now coming to the melting and boiling point so so where 
overall you are going to study this as a physical property right so overall we combinedly uh, togetherly we can study with respect to the physical properties and the group trends so coming to the melting point and boiling point so as we know that whenever we study the chemical uh, chemical processes where overall the solid liquid and gaseous state with respect to any chemical compound with respect to what force we can say either with respect to the uh, weak van der waals forces right so here also in case of in case of group 17 elements their existence of weak van der waals force of attraction between the atoms like diatomic molecule you consider all the halogen atoms exist as diatomic molecules that is as x2 so if you consider f2 cl2 br2 i2 so these all are what diatomic molecules right so diatomic molecules which are homo diatomic molecules i can say so all are existing in different state where exactly with respect to melting point and boiling point so the whatever the weak van der waals of attraction you can see with respect to f2 cl2 br2 i2 so as you go down the group as you go down the group the size is increasing right so the size is increasing in the sense what the weak van der waals force of attraction also increases that's why whenever we can see with respect to f2 cl2 br2 i2 so i2 will be having higher boiling point rather than f2 so f2 is having only minus 188 but i2 is having 183 so what you can conclude as you go down the group there will be increase in the melting and boiling point of all the elements right so this is what you can conclude with respect to weak van der waals forces of attraction so as a result f2 and cl2 gases at room temperature and br2 is liquid and i2 is solid in nature that is why that is why because weak van der waals force of attraction so this is what overall we can say with respect to melting point and boiling point coming to the next part is atomic and ionic radius so every periodic elements whenever you consider not only the p block elements so everywhere down the group in the periodic table always the size will be increasing right so the atomic size always increases when you go down the group in periodic table so here also the same thing you have to apply but here here you are comparing with atoms and ions right so atoms and ions as you can consider so atoms and ions so ions are larger in size compared to atoms always so always ions are larger in size compared to atoms so overall what you can say with respect to that one thing why there is increase in the size of the ions because the atom which is uh, already having electrons so it is accepting extra two more electrons so once it accepts uh, extra electrons then there will be increase in its size so once there is increase in its size then we can say with respect to atomic radius and ionic radius there will be more difference with respect to atomic radius and ionic radius so you can see clearly the ionic radius is more compared to atomic radius okay so one thing you can conclude so greater the atomic number then more number of electrons are added so they these go into what shell so this is going to shell and it will be increasing from the nucleus so coming to the next where the ions are larger already we concluded why because you are adding extra electrons to the elements and there will be increase in its size so this is all with respect to atomic and ionic radius now coming to the next part is electronegativity so electronegativity when we say so electronegativity of fluorine is always higher so this we are we, are, we have already concluded why because fluorine is smaller in size so one thing it is smaller in size and iodine is larger in size so when we compare with respect to size the iodine is larger and fluorine is smaller right so if it is smaller and iodine is larger then overall what you can say there will be increase in the nuclear charge due to greater number of protons which could attract the electrons more right so because they attract the electrons more the fluorine is more electronegative compared to iodine so coming to the next overall what you can conclude increase in the number of shells so if you consider nuclei here so just i will consider nuclei so there will be so many orbitals right so there are so many orbitals suppose you consider this is s p d f so whatever the electrons present in the s orbitals are very near to positively charged nuclei 
right so then what i can say the attraction force towards the nuclei will be more compared to s electrons and f electrons whenever you compare com compare so the d and p so p and d electrons are shielding f electrons right so these are shielding the f electrons so overall we can say more shielding and less pull on electron so it will not pull the electron towards itself that's why what we can say it will be it will be showing less electron affinity so overall what we can say the electronegativity of the fluorine is more compared to iodine and apart from that what else you can compare you can compare with respect to atomic radius so atomic radius where as you go down the group the size is increasing right so the size is increasing then the electron distance so whatever the distance we can say the distance is also increasing so the distance is increasing with respect to atomic radius so overall we can say the electronegativity of the fluorine is more compared to iodine so this is what with respect to with respect to electronegativity now coming to the next part is ionization enthalpy so ionization enthalpy is what you are providing some amount of energy to ionize the molecule right so ionization when you compare with respect to fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and lastly acetate so overall here they have the little tendency to lose the electron why do they have little tendency to lose the electron because they are just one short electron far away to accept one electron so just they can attain the noble gas configuration right so if they want to attain the noble gas configuration they will be very readily accept the electrons whenever the electron will be donated by any other molecule so that's why so they have the little tendency to lose the electron instead they can accept the electron readily so fluorine will be having more reactivity part compared to iodine and acetate so overall so they have very high ionization enthalpy so they have very high ionization enthalpy and due to increase in size increase in size down the group the ionization enthalpy also decreases so when you go towards this iodine the ie ie or else ionization enthalpy we can say it will decrease so when you go towards the fluorine towards the fluorine it will be increasing when you go towards the iodine it will be decreasing so that is why with respect to fluorine and iodine electronegativity part and nextly this is what the ionization enthalpy you have studied apart from that what else you can have that is electron gain enthalpy so electron gain enthalpy as you can see the halogens have a uh, high that is high negative electron gain enthalpy because they are readily accept the accept one electron to attain noble gas configuration that's why we can say they have higher electron gain enthalpy compared to all elements in the p block and this is what the negative value decreases down the group this is decreasing down the group as we have seen with respect to ionization energy and the electron gain enthalpy of fluorine is less negative than the chlorine due to its smaller size so the smaller size of the fluorine causing its electron affinity to go down compared to chlorine so why because in case of fluorine as it has smaller size there will be electron repulsion so because of that electron repulsion what we can say the electron affinity whenever we compare between fluorine and chlorine the chlorine will be having more electron affinity rather than fluorine so this is what we can say electron gain enthalpy now coming to the next uh, periodic trend that is enthalpy of dissociation okay so enthalpy of dissociation as you can see here so on moving down the group again on moving down the group that is towards iodine i will write here so fluorine chlorine bromine iodine so once you go down the group that is enthalpy of dissociation also decreases because on moving down the group the size of the halogen increases so atomic size is also increasing down the group right atomic size is increasing in the sense what the bond length bond length will be increasing but bond strength will be decreasing so bond strength will be decreasing so this is what we can say the bond length of all the halogens like x2 if you consider that is like f2 and cl2 br2 i2 so these are what the diatomic molecules we can say overall 
right so this is what you have and where you are going down the group the atomic size is increasing and the bond length is increasing but bond strength is decreasing because the f2 when whenever you compare with the i2 molecule the fluorine is being high electronegative atom whenever you consider its molecule with respect to the i2 it will be having higher bond strength rather than i2 so overall what you can say the enthalpy of dissociation will be more for the f2 rather than i2 so in case of the size as it increases with respect to iodine so iodine is a bigger molecule bigger atom right so whenever you consider its molecule so it is easy to break them so it is easy to separate them compared to fluorine because fluorine is highly reactive compared to iodine chlorine and bromine so this is what overall you can say with respect to electron that is enthalpy of dissociation now coming to the next part next part okay so coming to the next part that is overall periodic trends whatever you have studied till now so that i have collected in a single slide you can just um, glance it so firstly their atomic size so i have shown with respect to its increasing order so atomic size where it is increasing down the group and ionization enthalpy where it is more towards moving towards fluorine and ionize that is electron gain enthalpy again where towards fluorine and electronegativity where again it is towards the fluorine why because fluorine is most electronegative coming to the next periodic trend that is enthalpy of dissociation so the enthalpy of dissociation where the fluorine towards the fluorine will be increasing but towards the iodine it will be decreasing so that is what overall the periodic trends we can say with respect to with respect to the group 17 elements so now coming to the next part okay so coming to the next part is with respect to the group similarity so when you consider the molecule like x2 suppose you consider x2 so what and all you can say so the molecular formula what you can give that is generally x2 so x2 where it can be f2 cl2 br2 i2 and all are covalent molecules not ionic so they are strongly covalent and as you go higher order like higher order molecule so there the covalent nature will be increasing overall when you react completely with the metals so this these are what the structures you can see with respect to f2 cl2 br2 and i2 molecules and now coming to the next part next part with respect to ion formation so the ion formation as already i have told I already I have told that whenever the atom is uh, grabbing one more extra electron so it will form one ion right so ions where it is having one extra electron so their configuration already you have you know that fluorine will be having nine electron but here i have shown here overall eight plus two that is 10 electrons i have shown in the sense what one electron extra right so previously you have noticed that it was only two and seven so where the seven was representing valence electron but here i have shown eight and two so eight and two in the sense eight where one more extra electron is present so those those are ions so overall all gain one electron to form negative ion of charge minus one and ions are always larger than atoms so already we concluded in the periodic trends part right and the smaller the atoms the easier it forms and ion so this, these are what what we can say with respect to ion formation in group 17 elements so coming to the reactivity part again one and same it will be reaching towards the fluorine why because the electronegativity of the fluorine is higher and then what you can conclude conclude overall the fluorine towards the fluorine the reactivity will be more and iodine will be less reactive compared to f2 that, that is fluorine okay so this is what the reactivity decreases towards that is down the group and increases upper the group okay so this is what with respect to reactivity now coming to the next that is you have to solve the problems so if any student is present so can you answer me this question so anyone i hope all students are stick to book they are uh, maybe preparing well for the revision uh, of neat exam so just let me solve this okay so the question is like this the property of halogen which is not matched properly so they have given the 
order of halogens along with their property the periodic trend they have mentioned ie electronegativity density and electron affinity so they are asking the mismatch thing like which is not matching not matching one which is not matching so now the options uh, you can see a b c d overall so the a is what ionization energy so they have given order as fluorine chlorine bromine iodine so we know that the ionization energy will be increasing towards fluorine right so this is correct one and coming to electronegativity this is common that fluorine has to be more electronegative right here they have mentioned correctly so this is also correct now coming to the density so as we go down the group the atomic size is increasing then density also increase then what i can say this is also correct but the thing they are asking regarding correct incorrect one right so the electron affinity they have mentioned that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So this is what the correct option you have to choose with respect to incorrect answer because uh, as you see with uh, the electron affinity with respect to fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, as already I have told, fluorine has smaller atomic size and because of that reason, what you can say overall, it will be coming later after the chlorine. So chlorine will be first, then, then it will be what? Bromine and then it will be fluorine, then it will be iodine. So this is what the correct order you have for the electron affinity. That's why here for the this question, the correct answer is option D. Now coming to the next question, that is, which is the correct order of decreasing bond dissociation enthalpy? So the bond dissociation enthalpy, students, what you have to choose here, you have to choose for the decreasing bond dissociation enthalpy so how much energy you uh, you are applying to dissociate the molecule so that they are asking so coming to the first option where the f2 cl2 br2 i2 you have and you can say that bond dissociation enthalpy where as you go down the group so atomic size is increasing so lesser energy is applied to dissociate the molecule so you no need of applying more energy to dissociate the molecule because as you go down the group they are less reactive and energy will be less re required to uh, dissociate them right so overall what you can say the cl2 br2 f2 i2 option is correct for this question okay so this is what with respect to the two questions i have solved that is uh, regarding uh, group trends now coming to the next part is the physical properties of group 17 elements so group 17 elements as we know they show various physical properties and apart from that already we concluded the physical state and their color right so now just let us see once again so the list the first thing where the fluorine chlorine are already gaseous in nature and bromine is liquid in nature why we already concluded with respect to weak van der waals force of attraction right and iodine is existing in solid nature and that is also because of weak van der waals force of attraction so as you go down the group the weak van der waals force of attraction will be more that's why what you can conclude the fluorine chlorine will be gaseous in nature and the bromine is in liquid nature and iodine is in solid nature so this is what with respect to their physical nature. so the state of all the elements in group 17 now coming to melting point and boiling point so melting point and boiling point already we concluded that it will be increasing steadily down the group right so as you increase the atomic number the melting point boiling point also include uh, increase now all halogens are colored so this is this is what already I have shown with respect to f2 has yellow and Cl2 greenish yellow, Br2 is reddish brown and I2 is violet in color. So that may be vapor state where it will be showing purple color, right? So this is what with respect to color of halogen. So we know that they are exhi exhibiting the color. So why they are showing the color? Why? Because they absorb the radiations whenever they are in the visible region. So they can absorb the radiation in the visible region. And that will be where it will be resulting in the excitation of outer electron to higher energy level. So they will be having ground state and excited state, right? So from ground state to excited state, the electron will be electron will be exciting then overall what you can say the excitation of electron to the higher energy level causing the color to the halogen so this is what they are exhibiting different color with respect to different elements now coming to the next physical property the fluorine and chlorine react with 
water all right so water and the bromine and iodine are only sparingly soluble in water so with respect to solubility where they are sparingly soluble in water whenever you consider bromine and iodine and fluorine and chlorine can be reacted with water but are soluble in various organic solvents like carbon tetrachloride that is ccl4 or else chcl3 chloroform okay so these are what you have or else carbon disulfide cs2 so these are what the solvents where they are soluble bromine and bromine and iodine so next what you can see this order this is with respect to enthalpy of dissociation so already we concluded enthalpy of dissociation when you go down the group so it will be decreasing right so cl2 br2 f2 i2 we can give the order with respect to enthalpy of dissociation now coming to the next part is oxidation state and trends in chemical reactivity yes so the halogens already have shown except fluorine for, so fluorine will be exhibiting only minus one oxidation state but chlorine bromine iodine will exhibit plus three plus five plus seven along with minus one and plus one so this is what you can see so here you can see the minus one oxidation state exhibit only by fluorine so it will not exhibit any other oxidation state because it is not having any d orbital compared to uh, chlorine bromine and iodine okay so fluorine is lack of d orbital that's why it is showing only minus one oxidation state it will not exhibit plus three plus five plus seven or else plus one oxidation state so this is what you can say and apart from that the higher oxidation states of chlorine bromine and iodine are realized mainly when the halogens are in combination with small and higher electronegative fluorine and oxygen atoms so the oxidation state of plus 4 and plus 6 whenever you can see the oxidation states of halogens that is plus 4 and plus 6 in the sense what they already they occur in the oxide so specifically in oxo acids and all you are going to uh, check with respect to their oxidation state that may be plus 4 plus 6 so with respect to the metal atoms also it it will be causing so apart from that the fluorine atom has no d orbitals in its valence shell and therefore it cannot expand its octet and being the most electronegative it exhibits only minus one oxidation state so this is what the reasons i have given with respect to the minus one oxidation state of fluorine atom so the oxidizing nature of fluorine will be always higher compared to remaining all elements so when you compare f2 br2 and cl2 i2 so F2 will be more oxidizing rather than I2. So F2, where whenever you consider F2, so F2 is a readily undergoing reduction and in the sense what it is good oxidizing agent in the sense it will be oxidizing others but self undergoes reduction so that's why the question may be asked in such a way that the elements which will undergo reduction faster means which will be reduced faster compared to all the remaining elements so like that so f2 is the strongest oxidizing agent or the halogen and it oxidizes other halide ions in the solutions or even in the solid phase also so the main reason for the oxidizing nature of the fluorine is with respect to its small atomic size and its higher reactivity that is electronegativity also so this is what with respect to overall physical that is oxidation state and the chemical reactivity of group 17 elements so next coming to the anomalous behavior of fluorine so in all groups chemistry group chemistry you are going to study the anomalous behavior but the thing in case of group 17 elements the fluorine has its different behavior compared to all remaining uh, halogen so the first thing you have already known uh, that is ie and electronegativity and the electrode potential of all the elements are higher uh, means those are higher for the fluorine compared to remaining all elements so ie also where it is increasing towards the fluorine right so all periodic trends where when you consider ie electronegativity or as the electrode potential will be always more towards the fluorine compared to remaining all elements apart from that ionic covalent radii and melting point and boiling point and enthalpy of bond dissociation and electron gain enthalpy so these are all are expected more but are quite lower right so those are expected more but are quite lower compared to all remaining elements apart from that ie will be more for the 
fluorine so the anomalous behavior of this fluorine atom is with respect to what that is with respect to the small size of the fluorine atom so the small size of the fluorine atom where there will be electron repulsion because of that reason it will be showing this anomalous behavior compared to remaining all fluorine and bromine and iodine element so the next part where point the most of the reactions of the uh, fluorine are exothermic in nature so that will be where it is heat is uh, evolved so it it forms only one oxo acid while other halogen forms number of oxo acids so fluorine will form only one acid that is hof hypofluorous acid so it will form only one oxo acid apart from that all remaining elements so it will form either perhalic acid halic acid so those they, there are so many oxo acids but fluorine will be able to form only one type of uh, oxo acid that is Uh, hypofluorous acid now coming to the last point where the hydrogen fluoride that is hf is liquid why it is liquid because of the hydrogen bonding so because of the strong hydrogen bonding overall what you can say so it will be existing in a liquid state and where its boiling point will be 293 kelvin so other hydrogen halides are gases in nature so this is what with respect to anomalous behavior of fluorine now coming to the next part is reactivity towards hydrogen so how well the halogens are reacti reacting with respect to hydrogen and how exactly their acidic strength will be decreasing or increasing that you have to conclude based on the reactivity part of fluorine chlorine bromine iodine so overall whenever you consider hi or else hbr okay hbr or else hcl and hf okay so hi hbr hcl hf the fluorine we know that it has most electronegativity and iodine is less right so all they react with hydrogen and they will give definitely hydrogen halide so they will give hydrogen halide but the thing is whenever you are ready to break the hydrogen and x bond so hydrogen and x bond so x may be anything fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine right so the hf bond when you consider h and f bond whenever you consider so this bond breaking is very difficult why because the fluorine is most electronegative element and it will not readily leave it will be not readily leaving that hydrogen that's why it is very difficult to break this bond right so acid in the sense what it has to release the proton readily then we can say it is good acid right so when you compare the acidic property with hf and hi we can say that hi bond breaking will be easy compared to hf then overall what you can say hi will be good acid compared to hf but hf will be weak acid so that's why the acidic uh, strength order you can give as hi hpr hcl and hf that is why that is why because it is not able to break the hydrogen fluorine bond easily as compared to hydrogen and iodine so that is what the main reason you have to know so apart from that the stability of these all halides decreases down the group due to decrease in bond dissociation enthalpy so whenever you consider with respect to bond dissociation enthalpy with respect to these hydrogen halides so their order will be different that is hf hcl hbr hr so this is what with respect to reactivity towards hydrogen all right so now coming to the next part is reactivity towards oxygen so how well the halogens are reacting with oxygen and what and all are able to form so firstly whenever fluorine is there so it will reacts with oxygen it will form two oxides one is of2 and another one is o2f2 so compared to o2f2 compared to o2 this is o2f2 and next one is of2 okay this is of2 compared to o2f2 of2 is more stable thermodynamically that is thermally it is more stable at 298 kelvin why it is so because when you compare this o2f2 with peroxide that is h2o2 if you can see h2o2 where you can write it like this right so this is what h2o2 two oxygens which are bound to two hydrogen at terminal side right so these can readily undergo free radical initiation reactions where they can readily form the free radical so if you break this bond where it will form the free radical that will be undergoing the free radical chain reaction and that's why it can say we can say that it is 
less stable compared to OF2. So OF2 will not be undergoing any free radical type of reaction and it will be giving me the more stable uh, molecule whenever you consider that is which is mainly stable at 298 Kelvin. So these oxides are essentially oxygen fluorides and because of their nature mainly they are using as strong fluorinating agent. And coming to the next point where the chlorine, bromine and iodine, uh, they form oxides in which the oxidation state of these halogens range from plus 1 to plus 7. So apart from fluorine, we concluded that already the minus 1 state can be exhibited by the fluorine. But apart from that, the remaining elements uh, like chlorine, bromine, iodine, so they exhibit plus 1, plus 2, uh, plus 5, plus 3, plus 7 oxidation state. So the chlorine, bromine and iodine form oxides in which the oxidation states of these halogens range from plus 1 to plus 7, plus 7, plus 3, 5, 7. And nextly, the order as you can see that is iodine, chlorine and bromine here. This is with respect to the decreasing order of the stability of the oxides which are formed with respect to halogens in the group 17. And the higher the oxides of halogens tend to be more stable than the lower ones. So when you compare the lower oxides with respect to higher oxides, so the higher oxides will be more stable compared to lower oxide. So the higher oxides where you can see Cl2O7, Cl2O6 and Cl2O, ClO2. So these all are whatever you can see. These all whatever you can see with respect to with respect to the chloride uh, oxide. So you can see ClO2, Cl2O and Cl2O6, Cl2O7. So these are highly reactive oxidizing agents and tend to explode also sometimes. So the bromine oxides when you consider with respect to as you have compared the chlorine and similarly when you come for the bromine oxides that is Br2O, BrO2, BrO3. So these are what? Uh, these are the least stable halogen oxides and exist only at low temperature and they are very powerful oxidizing reagents and similarly iodine also exists in oxides form where it will be having i2o4 i2o5 i2o7 and these are insoluble solids and decompose on heating so that is why the o2f2 and of2 comparison is mainly being given because once it when it undergoes the free radical chain initiation reactions and all it will be decomposing itself just by simple heating that's why we can say that of2 is more stable compared to O2, F2 molecule. So this is what overall with respect to the reactivity towards oxygen. Now coming to the next part is reactivity towards metals. So reactivity towards metals as already I have told, even the halogens react with metals like monovalent metals and it will be giving some products. So here you can see here you can see where the magnesium is treated with Br2 and it is giving me MgBr2 as a product. So there the halides decreasing order can be shown with respect to what MF, MCL, MBR, MI where M is what? M is a monovalent metal. So overall if a metal exhibits more than one oxidation state like SNCl2 and SNCl4 if you consider. So in SNCl2 where tin is in plus 2 oxidation state but SNCl4 where tin is in plus 4 oxidation state. So whenever the metal oxidation state is increasing, then overall we can say the bond, whatever you can see, the tin and halogen bond will be more covalent in as the metal oxidation state will be increasing. So that is what overall we can say with respect to the reactivity towards metal. Now coming to the next part is reactivity of halogens towards other halogens. So whenever you consider any halogens and when they react with each other, they are going to form, they are going to form interhalogen compounds. So interhalogen compounds where, interhalogen compounds where the two more halogens, they are combining with each other. Like if I give CLF as an answer. So both are halogens, right? So both are halogens and they are combining with each other and it is giving me interhalogen compounds. So that is what we can say the halogen reactivity towards another halogen atom, right? So this is what the reactivity towards halogen atom. So apart from that, you have to study the chlorine. So chlorine where the preparation method you can prepare either by using manganese oxide in the presence of HCl you are going to get Cl2 along with manganese chloride and by the action of HCl on potassium permanganate we are going to get here KCl along with Cl2 
and MnCl2. So these are what the two preparation methods where you are going to prepare Cl2 all alone with manganese dioxide along with potassium permanganate. So these are what the reactions you have. So students, if you have any doubt, just ping me in the chat box so that I can answer you. And then let me move on for the properties of Cl2. So properties of Cl2, already we know that it is existing in greenish yellow gas and it is pungent and suffocating odor. Its odor will be a bit difficult to uh, breathe. And nextly, uh, it is about two to five uh, times heavier than air. So it's heavier, uh, whatever you can compare with, re with respect to the Cl2 gas and the air. So it will be a bit heavier compared to air. And it can be liquefied easily into greenish yellow liquid and which boils at 239 Kelvin and it is soluble in water. So these are what the properties of Cl chlorine okay so now coming to the next part next part is with respect to the chlorine reactivity so chlorine can be reacting with most of the elements okay most of the non uh, metals and it will give like alcl3 nacl fecl3 type of uh, product so already i have shown the react react uh, reactions with cl2 cl2 and aluminum sodium Fe. So these are what FeCl3, NaCl, AlCl3 formation and it has the affinity for hydrogen that is hydrogen uh, chlorine has a affinity towards hydrogen so it can form HCl also just upon treating H2 in Cl2, H2S in Cl2 where 2 HCl and sulfur is evolving and apart from that the last reaction as you can see where you are getting HCl along with the carbon. So these are what the few preparation methods with respect to chlorine. So coming to the next um, reaction as you can see the excess of ammonia whenever you use or else excess of chlorine whenever you use so what products you are going to get suppose you use excess of ammonia and you are treating with cl2 you are getting ammonium chloride suppose you are exceeding the chlorine amount where the chlorine is mainly uh, used in excess amount and it is being treated with ammonia in equal amount so where you are going to get nitrogen trichloride as a product and it is explosive in nature so these are what the reactions you have to remember because sometimes they will be giving the reactants and you have to predict the products along with the, the excess and whatever they have mentioned ammonia in excess or else chlorine in excess point and nextly whenever you consider cold and dilute alkalis okay whenever you consider cold and dilute alkalis like naoh in the reaction as you can see the cold and dilute alkali whenever it is treated with cl2 it will be giving me hypochlorite as a product and if you have the hot and concentrated naoh along with treatment with uh, cl2 you are going to get any clo3 that is chloride as a answer so cl chloride as a product so these are what the two types of reactions as you can see one is cold and dilute naoh alkali okay and hot and concentrated alkali so these are what the two preparation two reactivity part with respect to chlorine so these are what the remaining remaining cl2 reactions as you can see the bleaching powder composition right so when you treat cl2 with the slake lime you are going to get the bleaching powder and when you treat the chlorine with the simple saturated hydrocarbon you are going to get cs3cl where it it will be it will be um, just substitution reaction and when you have unsaturated hydrocarbon where you are treating with Cl2 it will be undergoing addition type of reaction and it is giving me 1 to dichloroethane as a product. So apart from that whenever the chlorine is there so like chlorine water you have so chlorine water upon standing it loses its yellow color so why so it is losing its yellow color because there will be formation of hocl that is hypochlorous acid so once the hypochlorous acid is formed then it will give nascent oxygen so nascent oxygen will be like this so which is highly reactive and unstable right so it is unstable that's why it will be readily undergoing oxidation and it will combine with other nascent oxygen and it may be converted into o2 molecule so this is what with respect to the chlorine gas why chlorine water why it loses its color whenever it stands so nextly the hydrogen chloride hcl you can see the preparation where in laboratory you can prepare by using uh, h2so4 in nacl where the 420 kelvin temperature mentioning uh, you are maintaining so you are getting hcl and apart from that another uh, react reaction part you can see the second one here okay and the next part with respect to 
with respect to hydro hydrogen chloride with the properties so the properties are again it is colorless and pungent smelling gas and it can easily liquefied and it will be liquefied at uh, liquefied to a colorless liquid where the boiling point will be 189 kelvin and it will be freezing to a white crystalline solid where the freezing point will be 159 kelvin so it will be extremely soluble in water and it will be giving me h3o plus and cl minus as a side so cl minus as a product so overall so its aqueous solution is called hydrochloric acid so whenever hcl we can say in aqueous solution we call it as a hydrochloric acid and the high value of this dissociation constant that is ka ka we can say so whenever we compare the acidic strength with uh, strength with the ka values we can say the higher the uh, value of the acidic uh, uh, dissociation constant then we can say the acidic strength will be more so hcl will be more stronger acid compared to remaining also this is what with respect to hcl now apart from that what and all you have to know that is hydrochloric acid upon decomposition what it can give so it can decomposes the salts of weaker acids and it will giving me sodium so where it is treated with sodium carbonate or else hydrogen carbonates or else sulfides where it is giving me nacl as a product along with the h2o and co2 as a side product so these are what the hydrochloric acid uh, decomposes the salts of weaker acids so this these are what the reaction part of hcl now coming to the next part student that is oxo acids of halogen so oxo acids of halogens as you all know where due to high electronegativity and small size already we confirmed confirmed that fluorine exist only in one oxo acid form that is hof so apart from that whatever the elements you have chlorine bromine or else iodine so they are existing in halic per halic and hypohalous acid so halic acid halic here you can see the oxidation state along with 1 3 5 7 right so hof where you can see hypofluorous acid it is existing only as one oxo acid whereas hocl existing in all type of uh, acids where halic that is hypohalous halous acid and halic acid and per halic acid and their molecular formula is also being given and apart from that hobr where it will be existing as hypohalous acid and halic acid and per halic acid whereas hoi HOI also one and same where it will be existing as iodic acid and per iodic acid so these are what the oxo acids of halogen apart from fluorine all are existing as different type of oxo acid so now you have to look at their structure how exactly they look like so these are what the structures of hypochlorous acid so just you have to replace chlorine by iodine bromine like that okay so now it will be chlorine then this is chlorous acid that is halous acid then it is halic acid that is chloric acid example and this is per halic acid what you can say it is per chloric acid so okay so these are what the structures of all oxo acids okay now coming to the next part is interhalogen compounds so what exactly interhalogen compounds so already i have explained that whenever one halogen is reacting with another halogen and they are going to form the interhalogen compound so two different type of two different type of halogens are combining and they are going to form interhalogen compounds right so here you can uh, you can you have to note down one more thing Wh whatever you can represent the interhalogen compounds as x and x dash so this x is different and x dash is different so both are different halogen and here the x is halogen of larger size so this x will be larger size suppose i consider with cl and f so between chlorine and fluorine fluorine is bigger in size and fluorine is smaller in size right and nextly the x whatever you can see this x will be more electropositive rather than x dash so x will be more electropositive compared to x dash and overall you can see the cl will be less electronegative compared to fluorine so this is what the interhalogen compound um, where the specification you should know how exactly you can represent the interhalogen compounds so coming to their preparation part so there are so many preparation part with respect to interhalogen compounds apart from that the three uh, six reactions i have shown that is clf preparation and clf3 icl so these all are interhalogen compounds so just upon treating cl2 f2 br2 along with i2 so just you are preparing interhalogen so just you are combining two 
you know, halogens and where you are getting the interhalogen compound. So these are what the reaction where it will be giving me interhalogen preparation method. Okay, so now coming to the next part is the shapes of halogen. So they, these are the shapes of uh, different uh, halogens, interhalogens, where CLF, CLF3, and BRF5, IF7. So the T-shaped and this pentagonal bipyramidal, square pyramidal shape. So these all are mainly specified based on the VS-EPR theory. Better you know what is exactly VS-EPR theory, right? So here where the lone pair of electrons are, are, are also mainly considered for the geometry of a molecule, right? So this is what exhibit, it is exhibiting like T-shape. Right. So these are what with respect to VSEPR theory. OK, so mainly VSEPR theory is applicable for the shapes determination of all the interhalogen compounds. In case of group 18 also, maybe you have studied that there are XeO2, F2. So these all are where uh, you are going to apply the same VSEPR theory and you are going to determine each and uh, each and every molecule geometry. Right. So these are what the shapes of interhalogens now coming to the next part okay that is properties of interhalogen so properties when you compare it will be they are covalent molecules and are diamagnetic in nature and clf all alone existing in a gaseous state and apart from that all are volatile solids or liquids and where i already have explained that they are more reactive than the normal halogens. So interhalogens are more reactive than the normal halogens. And the X, X dash bond length, whatever you can see, the interhalogens is weaker than X2 bond in halogens except F2 bond. So all these undergo hydrolysis and giving me halide ion. So this is what you can see. XX dash is an interhalogen compound where water is the where you are doing hydrolysis type of reaction. So it is giving me hypohalite, halite, halate, and per halate type of products whenever it undergoes hydrolysis. So these are what the main properties of interhalogen compounds. So apart from that, again, where in a single table I have mentioned all type of its physical and physical state and the color and you can go through this where the structure is also mainly mentioned and this is from the ncrt where you can see xx dash their formula is also mentioned and their physical state and their color and their structures also so just go through this table and still i am asking you students so if you have any doubt just try to ping me so that i can clear it okay so lastly three problems will solve and will wind up the p block element session again we'll uh, come up with the next topic so okay so the question is like this which is which is the correct arrangement of the compounds based on their bond strength so based on the bond strength you have to give me the answer so already i have told you regarding the bond dissociation enthalpy when i was explaining so the bond strength where it will be uh, mainly restricted to the element what you are con considering so if you consider fluorine is most electronegative and it is highly reactive where the bond uh, whatever you can say the separation of the elements will be very difficult so breaking the bond will be very difficult difficult in such case what you can say in case of hi hcl hbr hi okay hf where hf hcl hbr hi so hi bond breaking will be easy compared to hf so already we concluded that so the option a is correct here so in case of diatomic molecule where f2 we consider in case of hydrogen halides we consider hf hcl hbr hi so in general hx right so this is what the options you have so someone has answered it as dare tech uh, option C. Okay, so this is wrong answer because the option A you have to pick. Okay, so coming to the next part, next question, that is the halogen which mostly uh, means which will be uh, undergoing reduction faster, which is most readily reduced. F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. So four options you have students. So anyone is there to answer? Okay, so let me answer this question also. So the answer is F2 here. Already we concluded it's, it is good oxidizing agent. So oxidizing agent in the sense itself undergoes reduction and oxidizes others, right? So F2 is very good oxidizing agent, then it will be undergoing reduction faster, right? So this is what the option you have chosen for this question. And the next question where the color of the chlorine gas is. So this is direct question, right? This is direct question where the greenish yellow, the chlorine gas exhibits. So it shows the color greenish yellow, 
okay so these are what the repeated questions so someone asked me uh, okay someone is answered it as ram uh, okay b yeah greenish yellow very good students so coming to the next question the most powerful oxidizing agent among halogen seeds so this is again indirect question so whatever you have answered previously right so can you answer me for this question students yes i hope this answer is also one and same again f2 why f2 already i concluded it is good oxidizing agent right so this is what option a as the answer okay so apart from this i have covered the p block element where the group 17 elements okay and finally thank you students okay and just repeat the whole p block p block elements don't stick to only one group and i have covered only the group 17 elements 13 14 15 16 18 all group elements along with their anomalous behavior also also important and the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent so for all different groups the different characteristics you are going to study so try to cover it within short time again i will come up with the next chapter on thursday that is chemical bonding Till that, thank you. Bye-bye.